Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Brian Oakes, and this is my brother Trevor Oakes, and okay. we're making a drawing here at the Getty oh, yeah, of a, that's a good sort of panoramic scene, um, but it's on a curved piece of paper, all, all these and it's utilizing a, a, a method of, of rendering that we came up with, which which plays on the on human binocular vision. Um, okay. How, how space appears to our two eyes, and using that as a kind of base base for um, the the ultimate goal of what it, a drawing could be is, is, is to recreate what, how things appear to our, our two eyes. Okay. Um, so we're, uh, we, we've been creating this drawing for about a week and a half, and we'll be here for about another week and a half, um, up through December 24th, making, uh, making this, this, making this uh, image of Robert Irwin's gardens with Richard Meyer's architecture in the background. That's beautiful. I was just the, the, filming the details. The, the it's incredible. Thanks. Very nice work. Thanks a lot. Two hours worth of okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, this is a. So this catalog chronicles the thought process that led up to coming up with this method. Um, and it was. We weren't like. It's like at no point were we, were, were we thinking we want to make a better drawing or we want to figure out how to do draftsmanship better or reinvent draftsmanship. Um, it was, it, 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 in fact, we, if we hadn't come up with this method, we would have no interest in, in drawing realistically. Um, it was really just, we were pursuing visual art and recognizing that that anything that you see, like any, any visual information that you take in is gonna go through your optical set, your, your, op, your optical scope. And the the mechanism therein is sort of integral to like to what to how visual information should be formatted, or what or what constitutes a better format of visual information versus a more poor format of visual information. Um, and like so, recognizing that like the, the visual intake was as much part of the thing that you were creating as the thing itself was. Um, and then within that pursuit we were, we were making these abstract sculptures um, so this one is is uh, made out of matchsticks mm -hmm. and they're because the head is a little bit wider than the stick they're they they fan out and they make a ring and then you stack successive mm -hmm. rings this was built upside down um, the, the rings close into a dome uh, and that and that that that's sort of an emergent emergent property of the matchstick uh, the, or, or the, the the single building block and Emerges into this uh, more global form because of its local, its local geometry. Um, so, after building this project, we we're considering well, like one of the most focused upon places of this piece is a part of it that's not even there, and that's this, the hollow center of this of the of the sphere, because every matchstick is aimed. Whether okay. wherever it is in the project, it's aimed and crossing through this floating center point. Okay. Um, so that had like tremendous focus, even though it physically wasn't there. So then we started to consider, well, what what other shapes in nature share that formation? And I mean, and there's a lot, you know, um, trucking lines. Like a ship comes into port, drops a bunch of goods, and at, at a center point, and they get taken away on, on various veins. Um, but maybe even well, but what the shape that really hit home for us was that light rays emanate from the sun in a spherical burst. And then, on the flip side, light rays come into your pupil in an inverted sphere. So you've got, you know, light rays emanating out in a sphere, and then they're being received in an inverted sphere. And e even in the ambient phases, they bounce around, they bounce around in spheres. The light coming off of that surface of the building is like, one direct ray would be bouncing and uh, scattering into another sphere. Mm -hmm. um, so Which is why we use polarizers on cameras, to yeah. control that angle of the light. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so that led to to building another another abstract sculpture, which was made out of corrugated cardboard, um, and is 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 built into the crust of a sphere. These are this is a series of cubes. They're they're checkered in their direction, mm -hmm. and the along the back edge, in between each laminate, is a little shim of paper, so that each cube is about you know it's about the thickness of one sheet of cardboard wider on the back than it is on the front making it a, a small keystone. Okay. Um, and then by checking those keystones, you're able to propagate that curvature horizontally and vertically. Um, and then and, and construct the 
approximate crust of a sphere mm -hmm. with all the tubes of corrugation facing in one direction. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that gives you what, what is basically an opaque object until you place your eyes in the center point, like in that floating sure. hollow focus. Sure. And then all the tubes of corrugation are aimed right at your vision. Right. And you can see through it's the entire linearized. piece at once. Right. Like, it, I mean, it appears like a, it appears to be like a disintegrated, you know. Well, it's a screen. Yeah, a screen, a screen. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and, and so that acts as a visual proof that we are looking out into the world through the scope of a sphere. Like, we're not, we're, we're not a flat plane looking forward. We're not a line like, zeroing in on stuff. We're really perceiving things in this spherically arrayed scope as we view the world. Um, this is mind blowing. <laughs> you guys have put a lot That's of cool. thought into this. I mean, a lot. Well, and, mm -hmm. and keep in mind, this is like before we even figured out how to do this. This was just thinking about vision. Right. Um, and, and it was really like a sort of totally parallel, like sideline aha moment that led to this method that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like, you know, one day in Central Park, a little sketch pad, realizing that if you, if, where you're bored and you zone out you, and look past the edge of your pad, you would see the pad divide into a double image mm -hmm. because your sight lines are converging on the ground and they're disaligned with the pad. And then, that, and then you could see leaves coming up apparently through the edge of the pad, through that optical transparency. Mm -hmm. And you could make a crude tracing of the leaves. And we're like, oh, well, that's a measuring tool. That's a way of measuring space. Or that, that's a way of looking at visual space. And instead of you know, looking and doing like, sure. okay, this tree is one thumb, and the umbrella is one, two, three, four thumb. Okay, that's four to three. All right, I'm gonna like do some ticks and like try and take measurements and then translate them on the paper. We realized, well, you can get it directly. Like you can look at the thing, mm -hmm. look past your pad, cause the pad to go transparent along the edge and directly lift those measurements without you know using only the mental calculation that you your brain is doing all the time why did you decide then to make these strips like two inches wide instead of doing a scroll so that where he's drawing is always right on the edge of that paper well um i don't think a scroll would roll up like i don't think you could get a sphere to roll mm -hmm. without it kinking mm -hmm. um but it's all it, it, it's also it, it, anywhere in that transfer ma margin is valid okay like, like, when you look, you look past the pad, your, your sight lines are fixed to be intersecting at some point of distance. As long as you hold that steady, mm -hmm. the transparent margin that shifts over will also hold steady. It's wide enough that it's that two inches yeah. in those strips. Yeah, and okay. it, it's a little bit less than the separation. Oh, I said that you said poles. that before. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually, it's, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a little technical, it's a little technical, but it's, <laughs> It's precisely the separation of your sight lines at the plane of the paper. That makes so, sense. So, so like, if, if I'm looking at this post, my sight lines are converging on the post, and anywhere that I insert the paper, if it's close to me, it's going to be you know a little bigger. If I insert the paper back here, it's going to be smaller. It's going right. to be the separation of the sight lines wherever I insert the paper mm -hmm. is how big your transparent margin, transparent margin will be. Mm -hmm. um, so. Are you going to continue to develop more of this, or is this just the latest bit of a discovery that you've made, and then something else is going to come along later, another aha moment, or is this what you're going to focus on from now on? Well, this is going to continue to progress, and every each new drawing is different. Like each each new drawing is it's reinventing little parts of the, what the actual technique is, um, the sequence of steps to, to getting it to come mm -hmm. together. It's like, and then is 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 it's just, it's constantly unfolding.